Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. I think you can see me back there behind this house on wheels, but what we're having a look at today is this almost brand new. It is brand new, 300 miles on the clock, 2023 Chevy Suburban RST. So as this sits, it's for sale right here at ClearShift for $79,000. And would you have a look at this Rally Sport truck or RST trim, making this just pop with the black graphics on top of the white pearl color. So what we're gonna do in this video, obviously, have a look at the front end design, let you know why I prefer this design over the GMC Yukon uh, designs, and the side rear, jump into the interior, then we're gonna take it for a drive. Starting with the front end design of this beautiful Suburban, the reason why I think this looks better than the GMC products is because of one single line, and that is this line right here. It cuts cleanly through the front end, and then everything happens below this line. It gives it this stately feel, and I prefer this over the indents that we have on, for example, GMC products up here in the, in the, uh, in the hood. This looks so much cleaner in my opinion, and of course, the updated front end, specifically with the blacked out RST trim. It just looks absolutely fantastic in great contrast with the black to the white pearl bodywork. And then we have these new daytime running lights right here. Also, very simple design. It's just basically an inverted C shape, but you're still gonna recognize this when you see this coming at you at night. A couple of other details that I love about this design is that you, f you can see the intention of the designers, where they wanted to put the graphic pieces and how they wanted to combine everything together to make this beautiful front end. For example, have a look at the headlight right here. This full LED headlight has the same kind of height as the top part of the grille. Then we have two big pieces of grille uh, trim right here. These two bars with the Chevy logo in the middle. One thing I would like to change here though is to have this be in black. I think having that in black like the rest of the car would, in my opinion, kind of complement everything else that goes on here. We have a nice bumper, solid bumper right here with the parking sensors integrated in the, in the bumper itself. Down here we have something going on that is fake. We have this vent that looks like a vent. It looks almost like a vent that's now closed but sometimes could be open, but it's actually fake. There's just black plastic down here. But I think it, they made it better looking by having this piece here and do some styling to this part instead of having it be just a flat black surface covering this whole front end. Looking at the side pieces here, I do like this carved out portions that we have in the bumper. So you can see the bumper goes from pretty solid looking and then into this chamfer that we have and then that goes into these functional air vents that we have on the side. You might think it's pretty unnecessary to have air vents on a big frame like this, on a big facade like we have in the front end of the Suburban, but think about it, when you go on, the, on highway speeds, these are actually going to help to reduce drag in the front end. Looking at the side view of this house on wheel, and I did my best to try to fit this whole car in one frame and I think I succeeded barely but we have this very sharp shoulder line that I love it goes from the front corner headlight in the corner of the headlight all the way unbroken all the way back to the corner of the taillight and it kind of emphasizes the length of this even more not necessarily that it needs it but it just looks very stately same with the design that we have in the front end this is a massive vehicle just sitting down here I'm a little bit intimidated by its size Coming down further on the body of the Suburban, we have the blacked out Suburban badge right here, part of the RST trim. This is also part of the RST trim. The way you know that is you have a black piece of trim on the outside of this. This is not retractable. This is just there at all times. And then we have this cut line in the body, which I think reduces the mass and the volumes of the side. This is a very necessary line to have on this specific vehicle because it's so big that we need some lines. The shoulder line in combination with this line reduces the overall volume of the truck. Another specific details for the RST trim are these 22. Yes, they are actually 22 inches. It's hard to tell because they melt, the, the, the whole volume of the car melts the wheels down, making them look more like 19s. But you have 22 inch wheels all around with 275 width tires. I do like this design because they could have went all black here. We have a blacked out theme going for the RST trim, but they decided to add some silver trim or graphics on top of these spokes, which I think just makes the overall wheel just pop a little more. A couple of more details in this area of the RST trim. We have the black 
trim around the greenhouse, which it should have if it's RST. We have the trim up here being blacked as well. And look at the beautiful integration of this, I would call this the, the third row window or the cargo window. No trim going around it. Instead, we have a nice clean little chamfer housing this part of the of the windows which i think is really nice in comparison to for example this big black trim piece that we have going around this specific area of the car super clean design specifically in this rear end the thing is if i were to buy one of these cars uh, one of these big suvs i probably would not go full suburban i would do if i were going for the suburban i would definitely go with the rst trim to black everything out I would probably go with the Chevy Tahoe in the Z71 trim. I think that looks great and it also has a little bit more of an off-road feel to it. Coming around to the back end of the 2023 Chevy Suburban, it's super clean here as well. It, the line flow even continues from the front, you know, the top part of the grille that I showed you, then that line continues into the shoulder line and then the shoulder line continues into this LED graphic that we have right here. So we have a congruent design where the graphics play well with the overall body lines of this car. I also love that they hid the wiper up here and not have it stuck right in the middle of the window here. You can barely see it unless it's active. I love that. You have the third brake lights up here integrated in this beautiful spoiler. It kind of sends the design off in a very nice way. Talking about the line flow of this design, look at this line here of the LED going into the, in this case, the D pillar up here and continuing this line. And we also have a beautiful little chamfer at this area housing the taillights which then continues into the trunk and the deck lid as well nice touch with the handle for the opening the trunk right here you have the rst badge on that side which has a chrome outline for it i think it kind of works to have a little bit of chrome there maybe around the badge itself but up here we have all of this blacked out we still have some chrome around the chevy logo but the suburban letters in the back as you can see are also blacked out looking very menacing and nice one final detail in the rear end that i want to mention is this part the black piece at the very bottom same as we have on, this, on the sideline that we have in the lower part of the side, this reduces the overall volume of the rear end and makes it feel a little more nimble than what it actually is. If, imagine if all of this would be white, it would look like a super heavy and tall design. We don't want that when we have such big volumes on, on a car. So this hides that really well. You don't have any visible exhaust pipes. There is an exhaust pipe sticking out right here underneath. But I actually like it that they didn't implement dual exhaust, for example, on this specific uh, SUV because it's classy. It's supposed to be nice and functional and clean all around. And having exhaust pipes hidden, I think that helps that philosophy. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 Chevy Suburban. It's nice and cool in here. It's actually very warm today, so it's nice to be inside. What are we talking about inside here? We have a 12 inch gauge cluster, which is fully digital for 2023 and the RST uh, trim level. I think it looks gorgeous. The resolution is super high and the, anal the gauges look pretty analog still. I'm sure you can change that if you want to. You can change anything that goes on in the middle screen, that's for sure. It's just overall a nice implementation of a digital gauge cluster because we have a nice hu housing for it with some trim on the inside as well. The silver piece that goes all around it beautifully done chevy nice job here we have a decently integrated 10 inch infotainment screen it doesn't sit up here it doesn't sit glued onto the dash instead it's melted into the dash and has a nice housing for it and a base for it and even a leather base right here and this is a fun little detail you have some storage it's just the tiniest storage compartment it's pretty deep but it's a small little storage compartment right to the right side of the of the infotainment screen and of course the the vents are very easy to use they're right here no problems at all and i love that simplicity is what you want these days don't make it too crazy by having some fancy software just to adjust the vents down here we have the radio settings we have this knob start with the for for the volume and we have some controls down here all the controls you need for the uh, ac controls are down here wireless charging this comes with apple carplay android auto you have a wi-fi hotspot as well and let's check this uh, screen out and the responsiveness of this thing it's very easy to use and pretty 
fast, there is no lag in it. You can choose to either adjust the climates down here or if you want to be complicated, you can go in and do it right here in the infotainment screen as well. You have a bunch of different settings you can play around with, trailer settings, you have Google Maps, you have your media and music, and you have your Amazon Alexa, the Wi-Fi hotspot, and a bunch of different things in this system. Very nice system, pretty easy to use, and as I said, really fast as well. On the left side of the screen, this is the integration of the gear selector. It's, it's pretty interesting how it works. So the neutral and the parking, those are two buttons that you press. But then if you want to go into reverse or drive, you, you kind of pull them upwards like this. I think it's to not confuse anything, uh, not confuse neutral with drive, for example. So in that sense, it kind of makes sense, but it's still a very unique integration of the gear selector. Down here, you have a USB-C and a USB and a 12 volt outlet in combination with two pretty decent sized cup holders here. You also have cup holders in the door and the door itself has a bunch. It's like a little maze down here of compartments. I like it. It's useful, functional. You have a big storage compartment right at the very bottom of the doors as well. On the left side of the steering wheel, you have the 360 camera, lane assist, and all these functions, auto stop start. I'm going to turn that off because I can't stand it. You also have the selection for four high, four low, and two wheel drive, and the settings for the lighting. The steering wheel, it, the design of the steering wheel itself, it feels maybe a little dated, but I don't mind it because the, the materials used on the steering wheel itself are very nice and high quality, leather wrapped, with some nice red stitching on the inside. And of course you have the radio controls on the right side and the cruise control on the left side of the steering wheel and these spokes going down, creating a pretty elegant looking steering wheel overall. The materials in here, you have soft touch materials pretty much all around this car. And up top, it looks like I have a head up display unit here, but for some reason it's not on at the moment. You know what, maybe this just has the hardware for it because I can't figure out how to turn the head up display on. And on the passenger side, of course, we have a big, nice glove box right there with also big storage right here in the middle. And you also have a bit of a dip right here where you can put your phone, I guess is a good place because it has this anti-friction material on it. Back here for the passengers, you have two more cup holders. These seats, super comfortable seats. I love the design of them because they have, they're very dark. First of all, I like dark interiors and it also has this nice red stitching going all along the seats. Same as we have on the steering wheel right here. And one fun party trick with this center uh, armrest is you can move it back and forth by using these buttons up here in the ceiling. And look at that, if you wanna squish the leg room for the passengers, you just use these buttons up here. And this is also quick with a massive sunroof, which I think is probably this button right here. Open it up. I'm not gonna open it up all the way right now, but it's pretty fancy. Again, something that I probably would not option, option for, but it looks cool. So that's the front row of the Suburban. This is all about space. So let's jump in the back seat and see what that's all about. Climbing in to the second row of this Suburban, we do have some climate control options down here as well for the passengers. I'm very close to the uh, front seat right now. So I'm gonna move this back and you can see that I have plenty of space in here. We actually has these uh, captain chairs with the super comfortable armrests here and some storage in the front uh, seats. A lot of space overall in this SUV and you kind of wouldn't expect anything else. I'm gonna jump into the third row as well and check this out. Still plenty of space back here. I can sit here back here in a lounge. Wish I had a flat screen TV right in front of me back here. But again, you got some cup holders back here and USB-C ports, and that's about it. We've had a look at the exterior. We had a deep dive into the interior. All that's left to do now is fire up that big 5.3 liter V8 up front. We have 355 horsepower, 383 pound-feet of torque connected to a super smooth 10-speed automatic. So let's hear what this sounds like. Alrighty guys, setting off in uh, the house on wheels that is the Chevy Suburban 2023 model. Under the hood, as I said before, we have a 5.3 liter V8 with 355 horsepower and 383 
pound feet of torque. Oh, you can feel all that, it's like driving the Titanic, this thing. You can feel all the mass just struggling to get moving, even if we have all that power under the hood. It's connected to a super smooth though, 10 speed automatic transmission, which I really like in these type of SUVs. Very smooth power delivery and overall a super smooth ride in these things. So I'm looking at the rear view mirror and it looks like the rear window in this Suburban is extremely far away, which it actually is, but I've never seen a rear window being that far away from me when I look at the, in the rear view mirror. It's just a massive car, this thing. If you have a big family, I can understand why you would I would definitely prefer to have one of these instead of, for example, a minivan. That's just my personal preference. But the size of these things, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. I'm a little bit worried here. We're at the red light. I'm gonna do a U-turn. I'm gonna see if I can make it in one go or if I have to put it in reverse. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna have to put it in. No, we made it. We made it, <laughs> barely, but we did make it. Not bad for this kind of wheelbase. I'm gonna floor it here and just see what happens. And we are up to 60, zero to 60 in this thing. 6.9 seconds. Might sound slow, but keep in mind, that's the exact same zero to 60 time that you have in the first generation Audi S3. I like this interior. Everything works perfectly with the digital gauge cluster because it looks like the uh, the speedometer and the tachometer are actually um, analog. They're in their each corner, which I like. And it's super crisp, the, the design of the display and the resolution itself. And as I said, when we talked about the interior, this is, this is a totally acceptable integration of an infotainment screen. It's not too big, 10 inches, perfect size. It's not one big TV that they uh, put Gorilla Glue and stuck on the dash. It feels very well integrated in the rest of the interior design here. Reverse camera looks pretty decent as well with the trajectory line. Pretty easy to know where you're going. You have all these bunch of different camera settings here as well if you need additional assistance. I wouldn't call this fast, but it is, again, a massive Titanic on the road. So if you're looking for some sort of uh, performance SUV, I don't think this is gonna be your type, your cup of tea. But if you're looking for something to transport a whole lot of cargo and a whole lot of people, then this might be the choice for you. Big thanks again to my friends here at Clear Shift. If you're interested in this Suburban and any other SUV or uh, truck that they have here, make sure you go and check them out here in Colorado. I'm gonna link their info down below in the description. And thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you enjoy these type of videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.